Hi, in this slide, uh, we're going to continue the idea that cost to serve uh, driven results are going to necessitate an overhaul in our belief system. When we look at the top 10 most profitable customers or the bottom 10 biggest losing customers, we'll notice that there's a huge variation in gross margin percent at the top of the of the 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 ranking report, we may find, uh, you know, 15 percentage points difference in margin percent, but the cost to serve varies uh, proportion the same. But what's at the top of the report, gross margin percent of sales is always a lot bigger, six, five, six, seven, eight points than cost to serve. So we make a good operating profit percent. At the bottom, we'll see the same big variation in margin percent and cost to serve, but in all cases, cost to serve is greater than margin percent. So first of all, it suggests that there is no minimum margin we need on a given customer on average to make money. It depends on the structure of the account. If it's nothing but a brokered account, we'll have low margin percent, but we'll also have low cost to serve, and we can still have a good uh, PBIT, operating profit percent. Uh, if it's a lot of transactions, we may have a very high margin percent, uh, but we have a very high cost to serve. So this brings up the idea of value exchange management, where we're basically saying, all right, the if we have a ten hundred thousand dollar sales accounts, half are winners, half are losers, and their margin cost to serve percentages are all over the board, those are all symptoms. What are the root root causes of why these these percentages are what they are, and then how do we manage them differently? In some cases, with our super losers, we, we can go out and we say, you know what, we just underpriced a big chunk of this by five percentage points. But since the cost of service 10 points higher, we still need to structurally change uh, order sizes and activity uh, uh, that's going on between the two of us to get to a, a, a profitable situation. Then uh, another way of looking at it from a trend viewpoint is year over year, Delta profit before interest and tax. If we rank all the customers from high to low, so what we do is we take all the operating profit numbers from two years ago, and then we subtract last year's, and the difference we rank from the biggest improvement, you know, to the to the to the biggest deficit in a sense. So we're looking at most highest positive delta in operating profit to lowest or biggest loss. At the top, we may have had a customer that lost $80,000 and this year, the next year they only lost 20, so they had a, a gain of $60,000. Well, that's still $60,000 of cost to serve activity we were able to take and reinvest somewhere else in the business. Uh, at the bottom of the report, uh, we'll find people that are falling out of, out, of, out of bed and say, well, what's going on? Uh, so again, these are symptoms. What are root causes? Five whys, why, why, why? Do our deep dive, you know, analytics. And what we'll find out is that th the customer wins and losses. So we won a lot more share of an account. We did a structural turnaround at an account. They gave us 25% more volume. Based on the, the items that they buy, that's what in turn increases supplier sales and operating profits and losses for the suppliers. Historically, as a product-centric sales pushing company, we we're thinking, let's do promotions on different product lines. Well, now you can go look at uh, supplier Delta PBIT reports, because you do the same report for suppliers, and say, all right, what did our promotional programs do? And you'll find out that they have negligible results. Sometimes they may even negative. For all the time and energy we spent trying to promote this product, we got lumpy demand. In other words, we loaded the channel up and sold a lot the quarter we did the promotion, but then we didn't sell anything for the next two quarters. And at the end of the year, we didn't net create any more demand for the product because the world is a mature, saturated demand kind of situation. Rather, with commodities where 90% is customers buying the same old stuff, if customers decide to buy more of their stuff from us on a better structural uh, cost to serve, total procurement cost basis, then that, that's going to grow our sales and specifically the sales on the items they buy and that's going to drive the supplier results. So that's uh, what we've got to do is to focus on those Dell reports and say next year, how do we make sure that we have more and more of our customers going up in Dell to PBIT and less and less going down uh, and by focusing on customer centric wins and fixes on the lose-lose and gaining more share, uh, that's going to 
in a sense, grow our sales, grow our profits, and please all our suppliers too. So that's the uh, the story as to why the service value chain uh, and winning with customer satisfaction or attention drives sales volume as the caboose, not the engine of our financial management train. Thank you.